uh, Justin Urquhart Stewart. Hello, Justin. Hello, Kevin. Uh, uh, thanks for joining me. I want to talk about uh, what you might call a business disaster, a commercial, <coughs> almost commercial suicide by the uh, Bud Light Company or its parent company, Anheuser-Busch, a traditional 165-year-old American brewing company, producer of the most popular beers in the United States, a real symbol of middle America. And for some reason, just over a month ago, they decided uh, to uh, get rid of their traditional image and to hire a trans woman called Dylan Mulvaney as the face of this beer. And uh, traditional beer drinkers uh, boycotted the beer, resisted this woke campaign, and uh, they lost $7 billion off the value of the company. This really and does prove, does it not, Justin, that if you go woke, you go broke. <laughs> it shows if you just follow a fashion fad, this year's fashion fad is next year's tank top, and you're going to look pretty <laughs> stupid. Basically, you take someone like Anheuser-Busch, they have got brands all over the world capable of fulfilling every single uh, uh, personal requirement that you have in your private life, whatever type of beer you want to have. And yet they take ones which have got very, very strong brands and then change it. That is so stupid. You know exactly where you've designed that beer to head, head for, you do it. If you find there's another market where you actually need, it's going to aim for a particular market of people with their own personal preferences for their private lives, then fine, do so. But don't wreck the one that's already working. That's just dumb. Yeah. So we're just watching, Justin, uh, the Dylan Mulvaney uh, commercial uh, where she actually had some uh, personalised cans of Bud Light made with her picture on it. And so she's saying, oh, well, this is the beer for people like me. Uh, and uh, they had a new marketing manager who decided that Bud Light was too fratty and too traditional uh, you know, young blokes drank it and uh, they wanted a new image. Uh, the new image, I mean, uh, have you ever seen something like this, a fall from grace so rapid uh, on the back of a major strategic error like this? I mean, you'd expect it maybe to lose some sales, but $7 billion off the value of the company in two weeks. I mean, that's I catastrophic, isn't it? That really is catastrophic because it's not just a matter of saying you made a sales mistake or something's gone wrong with a product or something like that. That's a fundamental weakness in your management, your marketing, how you actually run that business. And bear in mind, these businesses have got shareholders. Their shareholders are people of, well, our pension money, or because in America, American pension money is in there. They expect these things to be run properly and effectively and not just to react to every single fashion fad that comes along. And so, you know, this is just plainly stupid and frankly, uh, that the, the company deserves to be spanked stupid for it. You take any of the products that we use, you know, you go to the pub, you want a pint of bitter, and you drink the pint of bitter because you like the taste of it, but also prone what it's associated with. If it's suddenly associated with something completely different, and suddenly you find that, you know, my pint of bitter is suddenly supporting the Russians in the campaign in uh, Ukraine, the chances are I'm going to drop it. Um, so this is a similar sort of issue. So therefore, just go back to basics. If you've got a product, you know exactly who it's aimed for, then you focus on that. If you've come across something different, then you've got to provide something for that. This is just dumb management. And for a company of such breadth and success over the years, and they've got brands suitable for everybody they could have addressed this market with, then, frankly, they're just stupid and they deserve to lose the money. And, frankly, if you don't like the product, well, don't worry, there are lots of other ones. So buy a British one instead. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Now, uh, they are backtracking now desperately, trying to regain their traditional market, and they've come up with some sort of advert which no longer features a trans woman. It's kind of sort of traditional Midwest people and horses and, you know, real central middle America. Uh, so they're desperately backtracking. But if you you were a shareholder, I, I described them earlier uh, for illustrative purposes as shell-shocked shareholders, <laughs> you, you, you'd be furious. I mean, if I had money in Anheuser-Busch, a nice, safe, sort of gilt-edged stock traditionally, yeah. and they suddenly do this, uh, they show, the shareholders must be seething mad. Well, I mean, this is just shows that you know, it is bad management. And if you've got a company of this expert and uh, this uh, experience, then frankly, there are other people to invest in. You just go somewhere else. It's very straightforward. The fact that they immediately adjust and try and uh, repair the thing, well, that doesn't feel... Uh. Either 
Uh, I think uh, Justin is beginning to get a little uh, caught up there, which is a shame. But uh, essentially, if you're looking at that advert now, um, uh, you know, look at it. It's very traditional American, you know, American guys drinking beer, horses uh, galloping across the Midwestern plains and on the beaches. You know, it's as far away from Dylan Mulvaney, the trans woman, as you can possibly imagine. I mean, what these people decided, bizarrely, at Anheuser-Busch was was that uh, Dylan Mulvaney celebrating one year of girl life. Uh, she transitioned a year ago. She's celebrating one year of what she calls girl life, that that's the way to sell Bud Light beer. Uh, now, you look at the people on this new advert, and it's guys in baseball caps, you know, leaning over a veranda as the sun sets over the Midwestern plains and horses gallop through the fields and on the beaches. Much, much more traditional uh, America there.